This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome to Voice of the Veteran on Think Tech live streaming network series, broadcasting from our downtown studio at Pioneer Plaza at the core of downtown Honolulu. I'm your host, Helen Dora Hyden, veteran advocate. Today's show is near and dear to my heart because I get to personally thank one of my heroes from the Korean War Veterans Association that made such a tremendous impact on my entire family. The men who bravely fought to liberate my mother's country will never be forgotten. For all that you have done, thank you will never be enough. Remember that our talk shows are streamed live on the internet from 12 noon to 5 p.m. every weekday and earlier shows are streamed all night long. All our shows are streamed on Livestream.com. If you want the links to our live streams or previous broadcasts, which are available on YouTube.com, or if you want to subscribe to our programs or get on our mailing list and get our program advisories, go to ThinkTechHawaii.com. If you want to pose a question or a comment during one of our shows, please tweet us at ThinkTechHI. We'll try to get to some questions by the end of the show. Herb Schreiner may never know that the impact has changed my family forever, and it is generational. My mother was an orphan at the White Lily Orphanage in Daegu, Korea during the Korean War. She often shared stories with me about the big American GIs that would come with fresh fruit and chocolate bars for all the kids. You truly gave her hope and love in a very dark period of her life, and she thought of all of you very often and fondly. She eventually married my father, who was serving in the U.S. Army stationed at Camp Casey. And once I graduated high school, I too joined the U.S. Army and served. My intention was to go to Korea and find my lost relative. But as fate would have it, I ended up in Fairbanks, Alaska at Fort Wainwright. Your legacy was with me as I served, and I knew someday I would be able to thank you for the opportunities that you provided me. My son, who is an active duty Air Force is stationed here on island, also knows of your actions and the impact that you've had on our family. He is appreciative of the legacy that you have left him and is honored to be able to carry forth the family story. Many people say and feel that the Korean War is a forgotten war, but not for me and mine. You will never be forgotten. I promise. It is with great honor that I introduce my guest we have with us today from the Korean War Veterans Association, Chapter 1 President Herb Schreiner. Herb, thank you so much for agreeing to appear on Voice of the Veteran today. How does it feel to be thanked by a child of a Korean that uh, you liberated her country? I, I think it's an honor. It really is. And it, it uh, makes me feel that what I did when I went to Korea was the right thing to do. I lost my brother. He was 17 years old. He came back in a bag. We couldn't bury him and see him when we put him. But he's up at Punchbowl, and, uh, <clears throat> and I feel that uh, the Korean, you know, the Korean people have never forgotten us. Absolutely. You know? And uh, it makes me feel good because when I went to Korea, we had these little kids that uh, put their hands together and, and, and say, Thank you for saving my country. You know, when they said that, it erased all the hurts and stuff that I, I went through. Um, I um, <clears throat> volunteer right now. I'm up at uh, the, um, uh, <clears throat> I'm up at um, Tripler, the VA center at the front desk, and I help those who need, um, you know, help. That's where I first met you. I remember That's meeting correct. you up there yes. and telling you my story about my mother and thanking you then. Yes, Because yes, you always yes. wear your Korean veteran hat. That's yes, why I know yes, who yeah. you are. Because I'm proud. I'm proud for what I did. And I, my job right now is to keep the Korean War veterans out in the open, not forgotten like they have. Because <clears throat> when I came back, I was a tripler at the old, what they used to call the crazy house. There's that little pink building on the side. I spent three months there. And when I got out, uh, out of the hospital, I retired and left the service. But, um, you know, I started my career. <clears throat> Being raised in Kalihi, I started my career at Schofield Barracks, basic training. A recruiter came over in the middle of our training and asked if I would like to be in the Air Force, transfer in the Air Force, because at the time, 
Army Air Force. It was an Army Air Force. And now they separated, so they asked, because my test scores were high, if I would go. And naturally, I did. I was transferred after basic to Wheeler Field, which is right across. I trained as an a and &E mechanic and um, worked on the jugs. We closed Wheeler Field, and then from there, we went to Albuquerque, New Mexico, at Clovis Air Force Base. From there, we spent six months learning how uh, maintenance on the F-86s, the Sabre, the Sabre jets. And um, so from there, we went to Clovis. And Clovis is where the pilots and we trained to uh, prepare ourselves for the trip to Korea. Um, <clears throat> I have, I was the oldest of four boys. Uh, there's only myself and my youngest brother. One passed away last year, but my younger brother, Alan, was the one that was um, killed in Korea. But he wanted to go. You know, my, my mom told him, why don't you get into the Air Force like your brother? And he said, no, I want to go and I want to fight. That's the kind of boy he was. He was really, really into helping out. So um, my tour was from latter part of 52, 53. When I came home, there was nobody. You know, I mean, my mom, my brothers, nobody came to the, see me coming in. I just went there and then I went to Schofield. No, I'm sorry, Wheeler Field, and stayed for about a week or so. And then I went to Schofield. Schofield, I went back to the, um, my home in Kalihi. My home in Kalihi. I, um, you know, I keep saying I, that's not right, but I can't help it, you know. No, but you did. Because I like I myself. No. <laughs> <laughs> so no. tell me, tell everybody, no one ever guesses your right age. You have to share okay. that with us. <clears throat> I was born in October 1929. I'm 88 years old. I take care of myself. I help the veterans that go up there to the uh, veteran center at Tripler and uh, help the, the blind, the people with no legs, the, all these the ailments. And uh, I feel that's the right thing for me to do because I feel that I'm here on earth right now for a purpose. And the purpose is to spread my feelings because I grew up in Kalihi as a poor boy, the four of us, we never had a baseball, a bat, we never had none of that. I had to go to Fern School to play football or basketball. That's how I, that's why today I feel that my parents brought us up saying, help people because you're blessed with your, with your health and your family, although we're not rich, but we still have our love for each other then that's how I feel right now, okay? I'm fortunate, okay? I got a home, I got family, I got all these things that, you know, a lot of people wish they had, okay? Um, so I wanna thank all of the people and you for remembering us. Uh, I met your mom and I know what your mom is. And by the way, I forgot to tell you, I'm going to go check my, uh, my photos. I have a picture of a little girl that I took to an to a, uh, orphanage, and it could be your mother. It could very it well could be. be. It, it could some, very yeah, well be. Yeah. You know, Herb, I have to tell you a story. I went to the National Convention in right. D.C. Uh -huh. and met a bunch of Korean War veterans and told mm -hmm. my story about my mother. And gentlemen have always said, I was at that orphanage. I have pictures. I'm oh, like, yeah. you, you could have met my mother as a child. She was there from That's right. when she was seven to nine. And, yeah. you know, uh, for, excuse me, from nine to 14. And I said, that's amazing. And now full circle to be able to meet yeah. you, you know, that she talked about yeah. all the time. Because it would be about your mom's age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. I'll, I'll get it then. Uh, Thank you. I'll bring it. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your involvement as president of the local chapter. Well, as a president of the local chapter uh, of the Korea Wall Veterans Chapter 1, uh, we get together 
every day, I mean every Tuesday in the morning, and we have breakfast and we share our problems, and it's like uh, rejuvenating ourselves. So we, we look at each other and help each other out. My purpose right now is to help and let people know Korea is a beautiful country. They took the freedom that we gave them and the many people that died and people that are coming here disabled. It was done because that was the right thing to do. And I'm telling you right now, I don't feel bad. Going back, going back on a revisit to Korea, they do that every five years. I don't hear the other people doing it. And they take us and they treat us like the president of the United States. And they're very humble and they take care of us while we're there. And you know, the, the part that is really uh, make you feel bad is, uh, I mean good, is that when you get there and you see the hotels, the apartments, you see all these things. And when I was there, it was just nothing but mounds. Right. Nothing but mounds. And, and people uh, washing clothes in the Han River. That's it. So I am proud to be a Korean War veteran. I'm proud to be the president of the Korean War Veterans Chapter One. Uh, and uh, I plan on uh, working with this young lady here to get more um, exposure. Because we'd like to have a lot of them come here and join us. Sure. Because you see, if you go to Tripler at the VA Center, I, I'm there Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And I'm there from seven to 11, 30, 12 o'clock. And I'm there to help. If you, if you have 10% disabilities, I'll help you. I'll take you down to E-Wing and I'll find out if we can give you more benefits that you deserve. Remember, you deserve what you sacrifice for, okay? Thank you for all that you do, Herb. You are so appreciated at that VA. Yeah. You are a constant source of just entertainment and yeah. information and just, we're always very happy to see you behind that front desk. We oh, always yeah. know we can go to you. Well, you know, um, 10 years ago when I first started, uh, I was working with some people there and I got upset because when the veteran comes to the front, the counter, you don't sit there and says, oh yeah, you go to module four. Oh yeah, you go here, you go there. No, show respect, get up, stand up, eye to eye, and help them out. They make you feel better. I got them smiling. They bring me candy. You wouldn't believe it. They bring me candies and they buy me hot dogs. And, and to show their appreciation. Absolutely. Now, I got to explain this last year. There was a gentleman that came up to the front desk and said, I want to see my doctor. I asked him, what's your doctor's name? He was so upset. He wanted to jump over and lick me. I mean, he was furious. And my boss was sitting there and, and my boss was saying, you know, and, which was pointing to the security. And I said, no, 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 let me, I let him vent. Then I looked at him and said, hey, bro, why you not come with me? Where are you going? No, oh, come, come. I took him upstairs to registration, find out what his doctor's name was and where he had to go, took him there. Today, we are the best friends. He came back down and he, he has PTSD, and he was upset because I didn't know what doctor he had. Sure. So I am happy what I'm doing, and I want to spread this to all you veterans, Korean veterans, all of you. Please come and see us. Let's get together. Let's be as one, okay? I'm not the only one, all right? I'm here to help. You know, you're going to have, you know, we're all old fogies, right? And we're all going to have people to say, oh, you know, oh, what is he, what, what is this guy, what is this guy? Hey, this guy's a Portuguese. He get hard hit. Okay. So come join us. Okay. And if you can, come to Tripler at the Veteran Center, and I'll be very happy to help you to get what you deserve. Thank you, Herb. You're very welcome. Much.
We're gonna, okay, we're going to take a short break right now. Okay. Um, I'm Helen Dora Hyden, Veteran Advocate. This is Voice of the Veteran on ThinkTech Live Streaming Network Series. We'll be right back in a minute, so stay tuned for more of the story. Ethan Allen, host of A Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., I hope you'll join me for A Likeable Science, where we'll dig into science, dig into the meat of science, dig into the joy and delight of science. We'll discover why science is indeed fun, why science is interesting, why people should care about science, and care about the research that's being done out there. It's all great, it's all entertaining, it's all educational, so I hope you'll join me for A Likeable Science. We're back. We're live. I'm Helen Dora Hyden, veteran advocate, and this is Voice of the Veteran on Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. We're talking with the president of the Korean War Veterans Association, um, and we are very excited to have you. I had the pleasure of attending the Korean War Veterans National Convention in Washington, D.C. a few years ago, Herb, and learned so much about the membership changes and other programs. In order for everyone to learn more, please have them check out the website for Korean War Veterans Association, Inc., kwva.us, right. or email Herb Schreiner at korea1929 at gmail.com. If you'd like more information, there are three chapters in the state of Hawaii. Uh, please feel free to contact Herb at 808-384-7018. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about some of the programs that they have. I looked, did some research about them a little bit last night before the show and learned that they're doing a new digital documentary, like a historical documentary. Yeah. Uh, it's the first ever, and they're capturing unedited stories and archival uh, things that veterans want to give. So they on the national website, you can definitely look that up. They okay. have that program. You spoke a little bit about the revisit program to Korea. Yes. Like for you to touch on that a little bit. Uh, and okay. and then I want to touch a little bit about membership before we wrap it up. Sure. So if you can tell us yeah. about your revisit program. Well, you know, um, South Korea has never forgotten us. Never. They're so grateful for what we've done. But you know, they have honored us veterans by taking the freedom that we gave them and built a beautiful country. And they're so appreciative. So on the revisit, we leave here, we go to Seoul. They greet us at the airport and there's like three or four buses. In each bus, there's a nurse. And behind them is an ambulance with an a ER doctor and nurses to make sure that if something happens to us, they're there, they don't have to wait for the ambulance to come. It's right there. They take us, give us a big banquet, honor us with medals. And so when I went the last time, I switched things. I told them, I want to thank you, your government, your people, for not forgetting us. You gave us hope that you bring us here and show thank you, veterans. Look what you have given us. And they have done it. And um, the consulate generals uh, that are here are very cooperative. They're here. To, take you to dinner, they do all these things. They're very interested in what our organization does. They, they, uh, when the, they have the REMPAC, a Korean ship, they invite us on the ship. They look at, they give us just about everything, a beautiful show, dinner. Hey, who else does that? Who else does that? And that's sad. It's sad to see 
These people come in with Agent Orange, no legs, blind, crazy with, their, with uh, PTSD. Why? They did that because that's the right thing for us veterans to do, to keep the other countries safe. I know a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, you, you guys only talk, you talk, you talk. Yeah, we talk. But we talk about the people of Korea, South Korea, that love us because we, as teenagers, 18, 19 years old, going to a country that we never heard of, and look at people dying I was in the Air Force, so I was very fortunate. I, I wasn't actually in the combat. But you know what? I seen them come back on the airplane, going to Japan, to the hospital, crying. Mom, I was mom. Where are you, mom? Dad, help me, dad. I heard that, and that hurts. That hurts, because here's a young boy. 18, 19 years old, 20. That's going back home with wounds. And who cares? Forgotten war? No. South Korea never forgot us. Well, there's a lot of us here that have never forgotten, and we'll I, definitely make sure. You're right. Uh, right. I just want to touch briefly before we wrap things up mm -hmm. about the membership changes, the exciting time for the Korean War Veterans Association, Herb, yeah. because now they've extended the membership, as you well know, to include any veteran that has served right. in Korea, yeah. di present day active yeah. duty. So that's very exciting. My father did three tours in, oh, in yeah. Korea, Camp uh -huh. Casey, Camp Pumphreys, and Camp House. Yeah. And so it's very exciting that he can join if he were alive, but I can join also as a, yeah. uh, associate. a associate member. Mm -hmm. uh, I found out the other day that my son, because his grandfather was a Korean War vet, can join as a member. Mm -hmm. So it's very exciting. See, generational, what can I say, yeah, right? And right. we're yeah. very excited, but I want to let you know I'll be coming to your breakfast Please and do. to your next general meeting, which is on yeah. the 20th. The 20th at Tripler. At Tripler, yeah. yep. And we meet for lunch at 11 o'clock. Right. Is that correct? Yep. At Look, the cafeteria. Please come meet us at the cafeteria at 11 o'clock on the 20th yeah. to meet the KWVA uh, representatives. And uh, you are always also uh, representatives at the Veterans Council. Yes. It meets also at yeah. Oahu Veterans Center. Yeah, we have uh, two mm -hmm. members that go to, yes. to the OVC yes. and come in and give us a report. Absolutely. On, on what's going so on. everybody's in the know yeah. of what's going yeah. on on the island because there's a lot yeah. of activity going on for veterans. Oh, Hawaii yeah. is such a very veteran friendly state. Yeah. So we're very happy to have you on this show. My pleasure. Is there anything that you'd like to add before we wrap things up? Uh, yeah, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. <laughs> he is such a kidder. I absolutely have enjoyed, and I want it's to thank pleasure. you again from the bottom of my heart, mm -hmm. from me and my family to you. Kamsahamnida Ajashi for everything that you have done. Chamaneo. Uh, <laughs> for our family and yeah. for our future, okay. because without what you've done, yeah. we wouldn't be yeah. who we are today. And but you know, you. it was the right thing to do to go to a country we never heard of, to help people that was, that was devastated. And so today, they come and they honor us. Sure. They honor us. They don't forget. And look at what's happening with uh, North Korea now. Yeah. I think what the, what the president did was the right thing to do to show force. Navy, Air Force, Marines, Army, ready you send that thing over and we're gonna you know mm -hmm. and and we'll take care of it right yeah. and that was the right thing to do to let him know that hey you're not going to push us anymore and in fact i was watching a documentary uh, yes last night that um the uh, reason why he wants to have to talk no he wants to talk to have a dialogue with them and that is because he's not ready to shoot that. He doesn't sure. have the atomic bomb, but he tried to scare us, you know. But um, I know one thing. I'm blessed to be here to help you veterans that need help. I'm there. Come to the, to the hospital, and I will help you with your benefits, 
or even your ailment. What's wrong with you? Because, you know, a lot of them, uh, when they go there, they say, well, we're working on it. Yeah, they're working on it. But I don't know, what are you doing for me? Yeah. Working on it doesn't mean nothing. Go there and say, hey, I have all my records in. What are you going to do for me? And let them know that. Don't tell me they're working. That's, to me, that's my, private, my personal feelings. That's a cop-out. Because it took me five years to get mine. And the only reason why, well, I'll tell you what. The first time I put my paperwork in, I worked on jets and missiles, and my hearing was bad. You know what they did? They sent me a letter saying, denied. It could have caused the problem. Isn't that something? We are very lucky to have you at oh, the it's VA my pleasure. and to represent the uh, Korean War Veterans yeah. Association as the current president. Thank you do you. two year term, is that correct? Two year, Perfect. yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So, everybody, please join the organization. Yeah. Let's keep the memory alive and let's help these gentlemen that sacrifice so much for us. Okay, we're out of time and we'll have to wrap it up. I'm Helen Dora Hyden, veteran advocate, voice of the veteran on Think Tech live streaming network series. I would like to once again thank from the bottom of my heart my hero, it's Herb, my Herb Schreiner, my and all the Korean War veterans for their yeah. sacrifice. I will <clears throat> I will mention it on Tuesday when we have our breakfast at Leaky Leaky that, that uh, we had an uh, opportunity to come here and speak to the thank public. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks to you, all of you for being here. Thanks to our broadcast engineer, Ray, our floor manager, Cindy, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer, who puts it all together. And thanks to you, our listeners, for listening. If you want to get our email or social media program advisories, click the link on thinktechhawaii.com. If you'd like to be a guest, underwriter, or volunteer, or if you want to join us in our downtown studio in Pioneer Plaza, contact Jay at thinktechhawaii.com. If you want the links to our live streams or our previous broadcasts on Ustream.tv or YouTube.com, just go to ThinkTechHawaii.com. Go there and to our Facebook page and tell them you like us. We'd love for you to like us. And of course, I'll see you in two weeks for more Voice of the Veteran on ThinkTech. Tune in and tell your friends to tune in as well. I'm Helen Dora Hyden, veteran advocate. Aloha, everyone.